Les Chateliers principle. Last class, we were talking about how nature wants to get the chemical equilibrium all the time. Great. It's there, right? And all the underlying idea that things are, reactions are dynamic and the amount of product formation, the rate of that is the same as the rate of the reactant formation, just like we did in that little demonstration with the, with the beaker. Well, you can mess it up. And there's real strong advantages to this. For example, let's say uh, you're a drug manufacturer, and I don't know if naproxen is really difficult or really expensive to make, but let's pretend it is. If you have arthritis, you're taking it. A lot of folks do. And hey, what can you do to that system so you can generate more naproxen than you would under other conditions? So there's principle. And for example, you have a Diet Coke. Can a Diet Coke? The amount of, in that can, the chemicals in that can, their concentrations had better not be changing. Right? The manufacturer doesn't want them changing. It wants to know what's in that can. Well, you can mess with stuff, right, just by shaking it up, for one thing. Our atmosphere, it's been around for, I don't know, you biologists, a million years or something like that. I don't know. It should have reached chemical equilibrium by now, right? Because some equilibrium take a long time, but it should have. I'm sure it has, but we, we're messing with it. And you, a lot of folks have weighed into this greenhouse effect issue. But you got to listen to the people who know what they're doing. If they say they're a climatologist, hey. But they, if you look at the journal, it's the Journal of Medical Education or something, you got to be careful, right? But, so all I'm saying is the guys who really know their stuff, there's really no argument. We are influencing the atmosphere. Okay, and I'll be glad to talk to you about that more later if you like, but... <laughs> yeah. Oxman. Okay, Lay Chatelier's principle. Alexa, in a nutshell, just what would you say it actually is? Lay Chatelier's principle. What could you say? Anybody have an idea? Uh huh. Do you hear? Her? That's really good. She mentioned, Victoria mentioned a lot of things you can mess with. She said temperature, pressure, concentrations of stuff. But I like what she really said at the end. She said that it's going to, something I'm paraphrasing, she said it's going to respond to get back to the concentrations where it was at. In other words, you've got to get the cake. Right? Where's my little pen here? If you don't get, you plug in, right? We'll write our expression for K, equilibrium constant. And you plug in all the concentration. If you don't, if you numerically calculate it, all the product, you know, divided by all the reactant concentrations, number K, you are not at equilibrium. So that's what she's talking about. You need to get that ratio back to getting, getting the number K for the equilibrium constant. That's all. That's really the mathematical principle way Chatelier, but we'll take a look at it a little more in layman's terms. Jessica, just to remind us, though, what would be the expression for KC, Jessica Vaughn? Uh, the concentration of B. Yeah. Over concentration of A and concentration of C. Perfect. All right. Now, here's our first hint, Destiny, at Le Chatelier's principle. What does not show up in the KC expression? What didn't show up? The C. And because it is a solid. Right? Pure solid, pure liquids never showed up. So that means if you can take some of the C solid or add some C solid to this little reaction vessel, it's going to have no effect. No effect on anything. Because it doesn't even show up in the KC expression. Imagine it this way. If it was pure water, pure water is 55.4 molar. So I dump in some more water, right? If water is reacting to a product, it's still 55.4 molar. The H2O liquid doesn't show up. Okay. Now let's take a look at this guy. Now what, what Victoria said, there's some things that we can mess with. We're at equilibrium. 
what are some things that she said you had messed with so that you're not at equilibrium anymore? Sylvia, what was something she said? Temperature, everybody, another one was pressure, or you can add reactants and products and that sort of stuff. Okay, that's the game that we're going to be playing. We're going to try to predict the result. We have this system at equilibrium, and we want to know will more or less D be attained? Now, maybe D is that naproxen chemical that we're after, right? Some dude wants to generate the most he can. So he found out that, wow, in this chemical equilibrium mixture, this big vat that they're using to make this stuff, it's really easy to remove this A reactant. I don't know, maybe it floats on top or something. Who knows? It's really easy to suck out of there. So he does that. He removes, he removes that A gas. What is the effect? That guy. Matteo, what would you say? Ooh. Why is he right? Because you use the amount of A that you have there, uh, the amount of A you can see the if you can move that, you can get it. What would be the maximum strength of the A? The maximum. Oh, it's theoretical yield or something you're talking about? Okay. I guess that I, I think how I think of it as is I think of it as holes. If I remove A, then equilibria can't because you just want to get the K value. It can't tell the difference between reactants and products. So I just like to use the word reactant. If I remove A, I'm removing reactant. I don't have enough reactant anymore to get that K number. So I got to get the reactant number bigger. The only way to do that is for what to react. Oh, I took away, I don't have, I took away, here's my hole. That's the hole I got to fill in. So what has to react to get more A? C and D. These guys have to react. So I'm going to, C and D is going to react to fill in that hole to make more reactant. It's going to make more B too, but the point is it's going to make more reactant because I need more reactant. So then when I divide products over reactant concentrations, I get the K. Okay, so we're going to have left. He was right. How about I remove some C? For some reason, although this product that found C is really easy to remove, what would be the effect on D? It would also be less. The answer is more. Do you see why? You can get more D. Less D, more D. Yeah, mathematically. Or think of it just conceptually. I don't have enough product. I have to generate more product. The only way to generate more product is if the reactants react and convert more product. That means I'm going to generate, well, some C, but also D. And you can't make C without making D. This one about pressure, though, Genevieve, is a little more complicated. To understand it, we need to remember what creates pressure in the first place. Solids, liquids, or gases? Gases, right? You're this little gas gauge, and you're sitting there in the reaction vessel, Bobby, and can you tell the difference whether an A molecule, B molecule, C molecule, or D molecule is striking you? It just, it's just collisions against, against you, right? That's all pressure is. You can't tell. So if we're adding in inert gas, that's the stress. The stress is, oh, we have too much pressure. It has to respond to reduce that pressure. So the way to figure out these questions is figure out which side, the reactant side, the product side, is the low pressure side, I call it. If you can figure out which side is the low pressure side, it's going to shift in that direction. It could be the reactants or the product to relieve this stress of high pressure. So we have high pressure. Let's figure out what our high pressure side is. The only way to do that is to count up the number of gas molecules. How many gas molecules do I have on this side? Two. How many gas molecules do I have on this side? Two. You just add up the stoichiometric coefficients, right? There is no high pressure side, they're exactly the same. So you can do whatever you want with the pressure. Right. It's 
Well, it, it can't relieve the stress. It can't relieve it. You reduce the pressure. It's going to want to increase it. It, you know, it can't respond. It doesn't matter. There's no effect because there is no high pressure or low pressure side. And we'll do some other ones and you'll see the difference. So that's the trick, I think, to the pressure stress. The temperature stress trick is to figure out heat. Is heat a reactant or a product? Here I'm increasing the temperature. So in effect, Nick, I'm really adding heat or subtracting heat? Adding heat. That's really what I'm doing. So let's figure out, Pablo, where's heat? I want to write the word heat on the reactant side or the product side. Which one should I write it on? There's a hint. It's XO. Things are getting hotter because heat's the product. It's heat's being released. Good. Okay, so there's my heat. So my heat is a product. Javier, what's the effect on D if I crank up the temperature? Now I have too much product or reactant. So where's heat? Heat's a product. So now I have too much product, too much heat, right? Too much product. I like to just use the general word product because K, that's all K is. It's products over reactants. So you just, all you got to do is identify whether it's a product or a reactant. Heat is a product. I'm adding heat, so now I have too much product, so things got to shift to yeah. reactants. So I'm going to have more or less D. Less. Right? Okay. Let's try this one. One more time. Okay, Lewis, now we're messing with what compound? Oxygen. There it is right there. We're messing with oxygen. And for some reason, it's really easy to remove diphosphorus hexoxide, P2O6. What will be the effect on the oxygen? What? Right? Yeah, because we have have enough now we don't have enough reactant so product has to we're going to remove some P solid Amanda so maybe it's just something on the bottom where it's floating on top just tweezers and get it out of there take them out Well, it's a trick question, right? Some people caught it because it's a solid. All you need is some there. You can have a little granule of it. That's all you need. You can have it filled up with it. It doesn't matter. You just need some of it there. It doesn't show up in the KC expression. It has no effect. We're going to add an inert gas to increase the pressure. So you could have a piston instead, if you want, of adding a a gas inert that means it doesn't react, but that's how they're increasing the pressure. They could, they're just shooting it in there. But like I said, you could have a piston or something too and just press down. But okay, Jessica Rojas, we're increasing the pressure. How you figure this out? The which molecule on each side? Yeah, of every, well, what type of molecule? Gas. gas. Has to be gas, because that's the only thing that can generate pressure. So figure out the number of pressure generating molecules on each side, which is only a gas. So everybody on this side, I have one. one. And on this side, I have. Three. Oh, yeah, three. I didn't see that. I wanted to add the three and the two. But yeah, three. Now they're different. Now I do, Mallory have a high pressure side. So messing with the pressure is going to do something. Increasing pressure, so it's going to shift to the high pressure side or the low pressure side. It has to relieve this stress. 
You know, shift to the low pressure side. Right? Because the stress is too much pressure. How do you get rid of that stress? It's got to shift to the low pressure side. And which side is the low pressure side? The reactants, right? The P2O6. So I'm going to have more or less oxygen then. Yeah. Okay. We're going to mess with the temperature, Victoria. So let's write the heat word where? The reactant. She sees it. It's endo. Heat the reactant. So I'm going to crank up the temperature, Mariella. What's the effect on oxygen? More, because I increase the temperature. I've got too much reactant. I got to get rid of it. So I'm going to shift the product. Okay. What would you expect to be the general temperature and pressure condition? And we want to make this laughing gas NO. Okay. Uh, we want to generate the maximum amount of that that we can. So. We have the only things we can mess with are pressure and temperature. Okay, let's just do the pressure one first. The pressure one should be really super high, Alexa, or super low. What are you going to do to figure this out? Number of gas. So, how many, Alexa, how many gas molecules are on this reactant side? Everybody, how many on the product side? Ten. I want to generate the most nitrous oxide, nitrogen monoxide that I can, Jessica Vaughn, so really high or really low pressure. Well, 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 you mean like getting? Yeah, I want to get the most NO that I possibly oh, can. The Make the pressure really, really high. It's going to shift to the low pressure side. Is that the NO side? No. no. So it's going to be just the opposite then. Make the pressure really, really low. low. Very low. As low as you can possibly get it would be the best. Destiny, how about temperature? Where are you going to write the word heat? Destiny, where are you going to write the word heat? Yeah, product size, right? Because it's exo. Okay, she gave you a good hint there, Sylvia. So do you want the temperature really cold or really hot? She's right. Did you hear? Very, very cold because remove the product. Remove heat. Now you don't have enough product. You've got to make more. And NO is a product. It says negative. Okay. Temperature, very cold. I had this little math balance up at the beginning for equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle. Then I was looking at it thinking, man, that ain't right. Matthew, what's wrong with having a little math balance thing to represent equilibrium? Because this guy, he's nice and balanced when what happens? Both sides are equal. You have equal masses of reactants and products. Is that what every single reaction is like? They reach equilibrium and you have equal masses of reactants and products? No. Some equilibria have hardly any product. Right? Because K is really, really small. Other equilibrium constants are huge. There's hardly, at the end, when you reach equilibrium, there's hardly any reactant left. It's all product. So these equilibria are all over the place. This has nothing to do with the chemical equilibrium. Well, if it has nothing to do with chemical equilibrium, it has nothing to do with Le Chatelier's principle either. Okay. Okay. We're done. It's a Friday. But I'm not letting you go home. Why? Because I know what's coming up. I know what's coming up. And we're going to do the as ugly as it gets. Especially for those who are faint. <laughs> okay, take a look at this. 
Although, I want to solve for A. Yeah, that's the here he's saying it's the diagonal story. You move diagonals to the top. You can move sorry, stuff on the bottom to the top, stuff on the top to the bottom, you just go along the diagonal. So I think that's Genevieve the way to go on this. What would you do then? Well, the B, is, the B is up there on top with the A. A's already up on top. Let's get rid of the, the C and D. Let's move it over along the diagonal. You end up with A plus B equals, and I write this whole mess down, E and F over G and H, and then you've got to move the C and D up, so now it's up here. Bobby, want to solve for that A? Subtract B from both sides. Right. All we're left with is A. It's this big mess. E plus F. C plus D. Divided by G plus H. Right? And it looks ugly, but you don't care because you have a calculator. Right? It doesn't matter. But let's say you do want to multiply it out. Vanessa Vasquez. Vanessa. How would you do this? Oh, sorry. That's Jessica. Vanessa. I, I know. <laughs> Oil. Now, the, the FOIL, I don't even know what it stands for, and to this day, I don't use I said, don't tell me, because I don't want to know. This is why biology and I don't get along at all. There's no component of it in me, because I don't memorize jack. I do, I follow what's logical. In other words, I'll take the A and multiply it through. And then I'll take the B and multiply it through. Because it's easy, and it doesn't it's, it's make sense. So... Let's get some brownie points, Nick, and just do it my way. Multiply the A through, and you'll get what? AC plus AB. Okay, and then you multiply Pablo the B through, and you're going to get BC plus BB. Okay? So much easier. Now, what if you had Javier... 3x quantity squared. What would that be? 9x squared. Everybody agree? Yeah. You already know something called quadratic equations. And this is going to look ugly. But it's, it's not. Okay? Our goal is to get these equations in this format. That's our goal. Okay, that's our goal. So here's our equation. Lewis, what would you like to do first? Yeah, why not? That's a good idea. Let's get rid of that 2x squared. Let's make it what? 4x squared. Nothing wrong with that. It's 2x inside the parentheses. The whole thing has to be squared. Yeah. Okay. Amanda, what would you like to do next? Don't forget the, the diagonal story. Right? You've done this so many times already. The diagonal story. Do what? Uh, 
Uh, the goal is to get AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Move the point 0.5 minus X. Yeah, exactly. Move the point 0.5 minus X up to the diagonal. Because you remember what your goal is. Your goal is to have everything up on top. So let's just move, move it up on top. Okay. Move it up on top. Jessica Rojas, what would you like to do next? Yeah, why not? Let's multiply that 500 through. 500 times a half is 250 minus 500x equals 4x squared. Okay. Now remember the goal. Mallory, what would you like to do now? No, you, you just let her talk. She wanted to move the 500x over here and the 250 over there. You could do that or move the 4x squared over here, right? Cause now, you have a calculator, so you don't really care whether the little number in front of the x squared is positive or negative. Cause you, but I just like it better, too, by having the little number in front of the x squared be positive. The reason why is it's one less thing to worry about. One less little minus sign. I agree with that problem. So I'm going to do what Mallory was said. Whoop. She moved that 250 and the negative 500x to the other side. You end up with 0 equals 4x squared plus 500x minus 250. Exactly. Now I know what my a, my b, and my c are. In fact, they're what, Adrian? What's my little a? is 4. Everybody, my B is 500. 500. Now, what's the C? Negative 250. Look at, our, look at our goal. It's plus whatever it is. So, let's, let's copy it down. Okay. Now, we plug it in. Whoop. We're plugging it into this. Okay. So, a negative B negative 500 plus or minus the square root b squared 500 squared minus 4 times a times c 4 times a times c c with a negative 250 divide all that by 2 times a which is 4 Okay. What you get? Now, when you do this, if you're using the calculator that you checked out, inside that square root, you just plug everything in. 500, push the next squared button. Push minus, push the minus button. 4 times 4 times a negative 250. And use that little plus minus symbol. Okay. Well, I'll show you. Let's write this part down first. Negative 500 plus or minus. Okay, push 500. And then use the x squared for squared, okay, minus 4 times 4 times, and push the little plus minus guy, he has to be negative, and I get 254,000. Now you're adding Okay. Yeah, you can do that, but I don't need it. I just plug it straight into the calculator. You can't. You can take that minus and combine the minus and make it a plus. But end up with negative 500 plus or minus. Take the square root of that guy. You get about 504. So there's two possible answers here. There's two possible answers. I'm going to get a negative 500 and a negative 504 and divide it by 8. And I get a negative 125.5. Or take the negative 500 plus 504, divide it by 8. That's 4 over 8, or a half. So you should get those two answers. And they match what we said they should be.
Okay. Make all that on the calculator because that's really what it is. Now, this sheet is the day 14 handout. There's several problems on there. And the day 14 handout is due as part of the homework on the assignment schedule. So you can print this guy out, or you can just write the questions down. There's only like three or four of them. So here's the next one. Try this one. This is as ugly as it gets. I'm telling you, this, you're not going to get anything more complicated than this. If you can do this, you can handle anything the homework's going to throw at you. So, but get that first one done first. Let me help you out with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, because it says 2x quantity squared. So you have to square it. So 2x times 2x. So you just rewrote it to make it 4x squared. Yeah, you can always use parentheses. Parentheses never hurt. So on the next one, you can either figure out what the bottom is and bring it all up there with the 50, or bring it up with the 50 first and then figure out what, what it is. Try it on your own. See what I was doing? To get this one figured out, you can always help the folks around you. The answers are up there. See if the solutions are. Yeah. Well, you mean, square root of a negative number? You should get the same answers as what I have. You should have the same answers as I have. 
Okay. Now you have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here it is up here. You got it. No, but I mean, like, 1.4 on the side of the right, I can do this. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, you can do however you like. But you could get a number for it. All right, because you got to figure it out in the calculator sooner or later. Now we're only going to be picking the positive answers, but we're just messing with math now. Okay. Yeah, they're both positive in this case. The only one's going to make sense, though. Did you get 50 for A, negative 12 for B, and 0.5 for C? Okay. So if you did, you're on the right track. Okay. They're both true. They both work. Except one is only going to make chemical sense. Like, for example, if you only have 18 of it, you know, it is, well, only one's going to make sense. But almost every single case in our problem, you can't have negative mass. What about, how did we get that? It's right here. And then what about? I'm trying to get it in this, in this format. That's why I moved it over. And I got to subtract 2x from both sides because it has to be equal to 0. Okay. There's another one. So make sure you can, after this one, there's another one. Oh, I have it in the wrong order. Roll it up so you can see it if you don't have the handout. There it is. I think that's the last one. And if you can do these, man, have no fear on the homework that's coming up. Because only a few are this complicated, but at least you'll be able to handle them. You have a couple minutes left. If you have some questions, now's a good time to ask.
Seven, minus two. I mean, minus point seven, or is that? Mm. I know that's, that's a negative one. one. It's going to be negative 1.3. One point three. Negative one and a negative point three is a negative one point three. You have to check with somebody else. You have to check with you have a square root of 44. You got 12. plus or minus. You got 44 in there. Um, 30, uh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. B squared minus 4AC. B is 12, right? B is negative 12. Okay, well, squared. 4 times 50 times B. B is not negative 5. B is 0. 0.5. That's where you messed up. Okay. Our high score was uh, Alexa. Congratulations. So you get your exams out. You didn't do as well as you thought. There's a retake. But in general, everyone... Oh, they did all right. Question four, there was a lot of question on. I wrote the homework question that it was taken off of, if you're interested in that. And Kabayat, you have some questions. 